kind of what inspired um, you to get, get involved with The Forge and share a little bit about your character? Absolutely. Well, when I first saw the script, I was immediately drawn to it because it is about a 19-year-old young man and he's being mothered by Cynthia, who I play. And when I read the script, I thought, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I pray for my own sons. I have three sons. They're all about the same age as the main character in this film. They're 22, 20, and 15. And okay. in the movie, The Forge, you see this boy that's coming into manhood and a mom who realizes that even if she's a good mom, she cannot be his father. And that hand in him, his man card is going to have to happen by an older, wiser brother who takes enough attention, uh, enough care and concern to, to give her son attention and affirmation yeah. and help to shape his character as a man. So she's asking God for that. And gosh, I tell you, I've got some journal entries I can look back on where I was asking the Lord about that in my son's lives when they were three and four. Lord, prepare the way in advance for coaches they're going to have when they're teenagers on the basketball mm. team or um, the football team that'll care not just about their athleticism, but but care about their character. Help yes. them to get a summer job with a with an employer that affirms them and places value on them. So just that picture of an older, wiser brother coming alongside a younger one and saying, I got you, mm. that right there just spoke volumes to me. Yes, well, I, and like you said, this this movie deals with discipleship, you know, and obviously you being in ministry, you know, not just an actress uh, at times. <laughs> how important is discipleship within the church and the message that the Forge is saying? How important is that message getting out today? Well, gosh, not only is it important, it's actually critical and it's part and parcel with exactly what Jesus' message and model was when he was with us physically in the flesh. One of the first things he did was call 12 men that were supposed to be tethered to him. He said, leave everything and follow me. That whole picture of one life being connected to another, that's one side of the coin of discipleship, that there's supposed to be older, wiser people in our lives too, that we can walk alongside, that show us what it means to honor Christ in our marriages. Like, how do we know unless there's an older, wiser couple that's willing to be vulnerable and say, here's where we failed, here's what we would have done differently, but here's how we've experienced the grace of God. How does a young business builder know how to do that with integrity? Unless there's a successful, older, wiser business person that comes along and says, let me show you how to, how to make sure your finances, you're a yes. good steward yes. of your employees and you're a good leader and manage people well. So in the body of Christ, not just in a church, but in the body of Christ, meaning every area of the marketplace, wherever the Lord has assigned us, whether it's in the arts or whether it's in social activism or we're in a courtroom because we're lawyers or or um, we're you know working with, with money and, and we're an accountant, no matter where we are, we are in ministry. And our goal is to say, Lord, open my eyes to see whose life I'm supposed to be impacting for your kingdom. So that's one side of the coin of discipleship. But the other side is asking ourselves, are we disciples or not? Mm. Because you can be a believer. Thank God it's a free gift. Salvation is a free gift. But you can be a believer and not be a disciple because discipleship comes at a high cost. It's about mm. surrendering everything to Jesus. So I think people are going to see in this message a couple of things that are going to be jarring. There's one part where this mature believer is talking about Jesus not being in first place. And the and the and what he says in conversation is what I think is going to shake a lot of people awake when they see, see this movie. He says, you know, there was a problem I had with golfing. And the young man he's talking to says, golfing? Are you kidding me? Golfing's not a sin. And the response is, no, it's not a sin, but I loved it too much. Mm. Oh my goodness. I think that's going to make people wake up and go, oh, wait a minute. We're not really talking about an issue of sin. It can be that. But for yes. the disciple, the question is not how close can I get to sin without crossing the line? See, sometimes we toy with that question, like how close can I get to sin without actually sinning? Right. But for the right. disciple, the, the compass for living is not how close can I get to sin? The question is entirely different. The question is how close can I get to Jesus? Mm. So anything that's not fully supporting that, that awareness of God's presence, that my ears are now dulled to spiritual things, that I'm apathetic 
sick or indifferent or my prayer life is suffering or I'm not prioritizing him and his purpose is the way that I should. Anything that doesn't support the purpose of pressing me into becoming more like Jesus, then even if it's not sin in and of itself, it's sin to me. So because good. it's not supporting the goal of a disciple. So I think this movie is going to present that theme and kind of make people go, oh, wait a minute. I've given too much priority to an mm. entertainment choice or a relationship or something that's not wrong, but it's not helping me be like Jesus. That's good. That's so good. I'm going to push into that a little bit. All right. So forgive me because I'm going to go a little off script here of my question. I love it. You are a Bible teacher. So I'm going to ask you, a, a, you know, ministry driven, you know, Bible question and, and kind of see where you land on this. Cause, cause you bring up a very good point. Um, Matthew 28, the great commission, right. You know, and that I think as Christians, and then this is my question to you, do you feel as though Christians take that as a suggestion <laughs> or, or should they be taking it as God is, is God giving us, you know, Jesus giving us a command. So yeah. really, the question is, should discipleship be something that we just maybe do or are we commanded to do? Oh, man, I'm so glad you asked that question. Um, it is an imperative, like like literally. And I'm I know I teach the Bible, but I'm not a scholar as some scholars are that I admire, sure, admire so sure. much. But I do happen to know that the in the original language, that particular verse that you're referring to, it is actually an imperative in the grammar, the way it was written. It is go. You are supposed to go. It is the mandate for the church and for believers to be making disciples, not to just be making converts, not to be building programs only, not to just have big platforms or great preaching ministries. The crux of the body of Christ is that we're growing people to spiritual maturity, that they're being formed into the image of Jesus Christ. You have to have encouragement to do that. You have to have people alongside of you to walk hand in hand with you. So once church is reduced to a Sunday morning experience for a couple of hours, if that's the entirety of your relationship with the Lord, you're actually missing the crux of what the abundant life mm. is which is learning how my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, all of the things that those entail, all of it lines up underneath the authority of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So for the, for the disciple, there's not a separation between the sacred and the secular. Everything is sacred. So I'm going and making disciples like while I'm running errands, I'm alert. Lord, is this little intersection I'm about to have in the line at Chick-fil-A, is this shimmering with sacred responsibility? Is this shimmering mm. with invitation and opportunity to just speak a word of encouragement or to let my lights shine so brightly in my attitude right here that my fruit, the fruit of the spirit is seen because I'm patient. Everybody else at the American Airlines checkout counter is so impatient and acting crazy because the flight's delayed. But there's one who is a reflection of the image of Christ. Maybe mm. just that disciples another and says, wait a minute, let me behave in that way because that reflects Christ. Just because we are yeah. moving throughout the regular rhythms of our life with that mandate in our minds. That's good. So good. Thank you for answering that. That is so and so needed in today's culture and church culture and ministry. Yeah. Um, let me jump Great into this kind of as, we, as we get to close a little bit here. You know, you you are, you are have a book coming out, okay, that actually has a lot of the themes or is kind of written around the themes of the Forge. Can you share, please? Yes, I will. And I'm so excited because I literally just got the first copy in the mail. Oh, so great. I happen to have, yeah, it's in my hands. I can't believe it, but it's called I Surrender All. And really it is exactly what the title implies. And that old hymn, I Surrender All. Lord, you know, it's not just about salvation and sharing eternity with you with thank God we will. Our eternal salvation secures us for that purpose. But it is about while I'm here on earth, learning what it means to bring all of me, every bit of my personality, my physicality, my strengths, my weaknesses, my preferences, my hobbies, my entertainment choice, all of it, Lord, I surrender to you. 
anything that is first place, anything that I'm holding on so tightly that when I feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit to loosen my grip, I'm resistant to it. Mm. Or my response time is takes way too, way much longer than it should, which is my problem most of the time, that you'll help me to start to see I need to loosen my grip on those things so that the only thing that is on the throne of my heart is you, Christ and Christ alone. Oh, that is so good. Excited for the book to come out. It comes out right around the movie. Is that correct? Yeah, it when actually comes out yeah. like August 6th. And then the yeah. movie comes out the weekend of August 23rd. Yeah, yeah. So I knew the, I knew the times were right there. All right. Last question. Uh, so what is kind of your hope, your prayer, the audience, you know, people that come to see this movie, that they're going to take away from it? Well, our hope is that what War Room was to prayer and unbelievably, that was 10 years ago. So the, the way that stirred people to be strategic and intentional in prayer, what War Room was to prayer, we are asking the Lord to make the forge to discipleship. That mm -hmm. someone's sitting there watching the movie and it occurs to them, either number one, that they, they have something else in first place that they have to reconsider and realign and recalibrate. But also that it occurs to them that we're supposed to be making disciples and that being in full-time ministry is not a prerequisite to being a disciple maker. I love that in this, in this movie, the disciple maker, that the hero of the film, he is not a pastor. He's not in ministry mm -hmm. in that way, in any capacity. He's a success, successful businessman. He's running a a huge company with many employees and he has bottom lines to meet and he's got to make sure that the the economics is working out with his company he's got to manage and lead people but in the midst of that he's aware of who the lord is entrusting to him mm. i hope that wakes all of us up that oh wherever i'm at is my post and i'm supposed to be a disciple maker right where i am so good so good excited for the movie go see the movie the forge coming out in august um and we're excited for it. Thank you so much. It's been an Thank honor. Thank you. I appreciate you. But what I'm saying is he hasn't had a good man in the home to be a role model. So he just sees me taking care of everything. But no matter how much I do, it's hard for a woman to call out the man and her son. Mm -hmm. True. You know, Tony's been helpful, but he lives an hour away on the other side of Charlotte. I just want to cover him in prayer.